Hello, I hope everyone is doing well today. Today we're going to be going over some do nots and a few do's. All right, so a really important do not is a do not build your base with doors currently. Uh, maybe once they patch this, you can build your base with doors. Or if you want to use doors, place your uh, door up high uh, with no way up to it without jumping and climbing. So like if I place a door on this, I could jump and climb through the door when I open it and that would be fine. Um, but don't place them down close to the ground or inside your base in places where the enemy can use their motorcycle. All right, if the enemy can get their motorcycle to your door, they just phase right through it like like it's nothing. It's not there. All right, um, this is a really easy fix on the devs part. This has been in since the beginning. All right, but even with the door open, as you can see, it's really hard to get even with a slightly elevated um, foundation. It'd be really hard to get your motorcycle up and through there. Enemies can't build uh, at your base, so you don't have to worry about them popping down a ramp or something. So if you do want to use a door, just elevate it a little bit. Um, the problem is once they're inside your first layer defenses. All right, so as you can see, we've entered the boundaries of uh, enemy territory here. All right. Oh, I'm in Bilbo. <laughs> so we're in the boundaries of an enemy base. Uh, actually, we can probably just get on top of their base and check this out. I can spawn a motorcycle. So there's no limit where you can spawn them. So now I've spawned a motorcycle in their base. All right, so here, I mean, inside their base, and put a motorcycle down. All right, so they had this layered with doors. We'd be able to just drive around inside their base and just put the motorcycle down right in front of the door and just face through it. Face through and face through it to where, where, where we want to be. All right, so here's this enemy base. Can't get through their door. Well, everyone's building out of wood, but... <laughs> and boom, now we're in their base. Oh, this would surprise them if they were online. I <laughs> probably shouldn't be doing this on servers with other players, but uh, here we are. Anyway, uh, I'm not actually doing anything nefarious. Just showing you how this works. Yeah, so you don't fall for this because people are going to exploit this. It may be bannable doing this, um, but at the same time, yeah, good luck getting someone banned that's doing this before they've already done the damage. Anyway. All right, another way to solve the door problem is to use... Uh, window frames instead. All right, so motorcycle can't get through a window frame. But you can still climb through. And if you have the wind potions that let you double jump, you can always set your base up so that you need double jump to even get access to the first floor through a window. Um, one of the issues with the windows versus doors is the windows have slightly less hit points than the doors. All right, it has 1250 instead of like, uh, I think, like, what is a door, like 1400? Some of the doors might be 1800 with the wall, but uh, yeah, so they might be able to blow the window up a little bit easier. But the windows stop the motorcycle trick from working, and at least until the devs fix that. Once they fix it, of course, using doors will be better. And if you want to use doors, the best door to build right now that we have access to all right, is going to be this one. The automatic solid wood door has the most hit points out of all these other doors. So this is the one you're going to want to use. So one solution players have come up with uh, to avoid motorcycles going through doors is just to build only walls. And when they run up to their base, they can pick up the wall and drop it back into place. And we'll show you how to do that in just a second. The only issue with this is if your base is in PVP, right? So if it comes under attack, you can no longer enter build mode, which means you can't do this. If you get into your base and somebody starts hitting it or right as you reach your base, somebody starts hitting it, you're not going to be able to move any further than wherever you were at. Uh, so it's not a good idea. That's why I suggest the window panes. Now, if you're going to, if, if your farming base is also your PVP base, right, where you store all your supplies, then you may want to hide your supplies behind some walls and no doors or windows, right? That way no one even knows that where they are. Hide it behind some false walls. So you go into build mode, right? You hit F to move the wall. This will let you walk through it, right? And if you just hit escape, it just puts the wall back where it was, all right? So then that's pretty much all there is to it. You just hit F, you walk through a wall, hit escape, and puts it back into place but you have to be able to enter build mode for this to work uh, so it's not a great strategy for getting in and out of your base and getting around in your base when you're under attack so make sure you have your key pathways uh, with at least window frames so that you can get to where you need to be when you're being raided all right so as you can see this thing flashing up on my screen doesn't stay long enough to read so we'll pause and go back uh, we'll screen, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll stop the video playing right there and show you. So this is between midnight and noon. Bases take 70% less damage. All right, so this 
This is when you want to be securing prisms. All right. Uh, whenever this message is popping up for me, it actually pops up during in my time zone. I don't know if this is the same for everyone. If everyone is locked to my time, you know, the same time zone I have and it's across the board, which is what it should be. Um, you know, they should just pick a time zone and that's the time zone it's in. Or if it is means my base, specifically my base during that time. And if an enemy player is in a different time zone, it's not midnight for them yet. I can still do the maximum damage to their base. I don't know. It's not very clear on that. And since I'm in central time and it pops up for me exactly at midnight and it goes away exactly at noon, I know it's using my time zone or at least me. So if you guys are in the central time zone and you're seeing it between midnight and noon only in your time zone, let us know in the comments so that we can figure this out. During this time, your base is 70% harder to break. So this is the time you want to be capturing prisms because let me tell you, it's already really hard to break into bases right now. Um, and making it 70% harder, players just will give up <laughs> and not bother. They'll just let you have your free points. All right, there's like, nah, you take those three points. We don't care. Um, now, of course, if you were capturing a golden one that was going to give 300 points, uh, that may be a different story. The entire server may just uh, raise your base to the ground to make sure you don't get that, <laughs> no matter how much damage reduction you have. If you're looking to level up quickly, there is a town right here with a teleporter right next to it, so you can easily get to this town once you found the, once you unlock the teleporter. And it has level 28 enemies. There's two elites here as well. There's one here and like one in the center of town uh, for you to kill. One looks like a pole with the stoplight on it. And the other one's a giant one that throws the uh, gas bags at you. All right, so this is a great area to go, especially if you're you know level 20 or so. Uh, you can come in here and you can really quickly push your levels up to like level 35 in no time. And then another great way to level, this is just during phase one, of course, if you're still below level 50 when phase two opens, you can come up into here and we're going to have higher level areas. All right. If you want to hit level 50 and just do it grinding, the monolith of thirst is the way to go. Um, <laughs> the Killing the dog is actually quite easy, especially if you can get a group of four together, you can do it without burning too much of your resource, too much of anybody's resources. And uh, if, you, if you do it by yourself, it's really easy to do. You know, if you have extra controllers, you can use them for about 50 Stardust or you can hang on to them for when you can really grind up with Stardust during phase two. And that's just another thing. Uh, if you um, don't care about hitting level 50 during phase one, phase two, you'll be able to hit it pretty easily. Just grinding Stardust and things like that. So I've heard and read about players saying this about using smaller foundations instead of the larger foundations. All right. So if you go into your uh, build menu, you can pull up your foundations under frame here and you have stone foundations and uh, uh stone small foundations and everybody's saying to use the small ones or instead of the larger ones all right so we have a large here and then we'll pop a small one down next to it so as you can see it takes up less room right so what the idea is you put one down one down and you put one down here like that and one here and it'll let you put two walls across instead of just the one wall you get on a large foundation and so that's the idea but if you notice, I only had, <laughs> this is a little complicated because my base is built, so I only have three structures left. Uh, but if you notice, it, these each counted as one structure, as does this. So just to cover the same distance as one large foundation, you're uh, using two points, right? Uh, make matters worse, right? So you're reducing the number of building pieces you can use because you're popping down a bunch of extra foundations that you don't necessarily need. And on top of that, you're greatly weakening your base. If you look, each one of these foundations only has 400 hit points. That is less than a wooden foundation, okay? Wood would be better at this point. The large ones have 3,600 uh, health. So if I show you the wood foundation here, all right, we put down a wood foundation, and it has 2,000 health, all right? And let me tell you, the wood foundations take quite a bit of uh, explosives to destroy. Uh, and keep an eye out for my next video. I'll be putting out a comparison video to show you which explosive is the best to use for rating and the results might surprise you so make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for future videos and also if you're enjoying this video make sure to smash that like button all right so you're fine with using the large foundations so the idea is you get less layering by using the larger foundations but it's not really true because i can you just have to cover a larger area right if i lay down two large foundations okay i can still get one two three walls on them all right now if i laid down the four smaller foundations to take up this place, 
then yes, I could get one, two, three, four, five walls on them in the same area. But as we said, the foundations are weaker anyway. Um, so they do blow before your wall would. <laughs> and uh, on top of that, it would still cover the same area um, as the three walls are, but you would have two more walls. So that's where the idea is coming from, that it's better. But really, it isn't um, because unless you're just wanting to build compact, uh, because you can get the same number of layering that you can get with small foundations, you can get with large foundations. Um, you just cover a larger area. So as you can see, this big monstrosity here is layered with uh, walls going all the way through it and ceilings going all the way down. All right, so I can get just as many ceilings down as I could with the small foundations, and I can get just as many layers, but just in a larger area, which actually gives more room for moving around inside your own base, which is nice, especially if you're a solo player and you're going to have to have all your crafting and loot in your base that you're going to be also using for battle. So hopefully you've joined a hive and you guys can decide what bases you're going to store your stuff at and who's going to be building bases for going out and attacking and defending with. All right, but if you're solo, you're definitely going to want to do something more like this. And we'll show you how to build this in a future video as well. In phase one, the current zones that we have are in Blackfell. We have the uh, Rosetta base safe zone, right? And then... Down south near uh, Deadsville and Mayer's Market, where you know we usually start out, this is the Mayfly safe zone, right? So both these safe zones have like are like level eight to ten, even though these used this one used to be the level forty five area, you know, level fifty area. So um, now it's not. Uh, so it kind of messes up anybody is trying to speed level because then now you got to find a new path. Then out here where you see none of the blue, right? All of this is neutral area. Everything out here is uh is pvp this is 100 percent pvp if you're in rosetta you come out here mayflies can kill you if you're mayfly and you come out here rosettas can kill you um rosettas can't kill rosettas mayflies can't kill mayflies as soon as you can see it comes all you can come all the way down here and there's this little island here a lot of people like to put their bases on because it's far away from most teleport locations and you have to swim out to the island to attack it and then of course there's this safe zone over here and this is the neutral base area safe zone so this is the neutral area so this is kind of intended for Mayflies and Rosetta to both build here. I think they made a mistake. I don't think this is supposed to be the way it is, but currently it is the way it is right now, right? Mayflies can rush up here and take the good base spots all around here on day one, right? And build in Rosetta's area. And see, Rosetta can do the same thing if there were any actually good base spots in the Mayfly area. They could come down here and build in those spots. Uh, it doesn't matter. You can build anywhere on the map you want, just like normal. Uh, so zones don't really matter about that. All right, so while we're talking about the zones, the, the this contested area, the neutral area where everybody can fight, um, I do not recommend putting a base out here. I know some players will do it, and some people will tell you it's okay. No one's actually going to attack your base and all that. But once you're offline, they know you have materials stored there. Some players may just come by and blow in to get your materials. Um, we, there was a base that was completely open, no reason to do it, um, no resources in it whatsoever, it doesn't matter, people were just out there meleeing it until it was gone, right? So, uh, they will find a way to get rid of your base, um, especially while you're offline, if you leave it out here. So only put your base out here to secure prism deviations, and then move it back to a safe zone. Another thing you'll want to do while we're still looking at the map, is you're going to want to go around and tag as many teleport points as you can. Uh, but yeah, that way you have places where you can quickly travel to, all right, so you can fight. So if the enemy builds a base here, right, you may want to have this teleport point so you can get to it as quickly as possible. Sorry, this teleport point so you can get to it as quickly as possible. All right, so let's say you're in the situation where you don't have a hive and you're solo, or you have a hive, but they don't let you store your stuff in their base, or you don't trust them to store your stuff in one of their bases. Um, but you see, you're, and they're not ones offering to let you secure in their base. So you're going to have to use your base for whatever reason to um, keep all, all your loot in, to make all your gear in, and to also secure deviations in the neutral zone. And we're in phase one. Okay, even in phase two, power will still be limited, right? So you're worried about your power limit. So we'll show you a quick trick on how to do that. And this will work for any scenario you're in, even PvE. If you want to set up a lot of anything, really, then you just want them to run for a certain amount of time and you only want certain things to run. When you're online, this is how you will do it. So all my turrets are pretty, pretty much powered off of a pylon. 
I can turn them on and off. So I'd have them off for now so I can use my uh, power for smelting and other things like that. Uh, so everything else in my base is running on my power right now. So I can turn, I would turn this one on when I wanted to decide I'm going to go out and do PVP and I would turn my other one off. All right. So here's my power room, All right? There's my generators uh, and uh, yeah, well, that's another tip here while we're at it. Solar powered generators do not have to be outside. They can be inside. No access to sunlight. They're just in this one by one room. No problem. So when I know I'm going to be capturing prism deviations and I want to uh, secure them, I would just come in here and turn this off. And that would power everything in my base down. And then I would go turn my uh, turrets on. Now, if you have a refrigerator, you may want to run it directly into your generator so that your refrigerator is never off. All right. And then, of course, if you have automatic doors, you don't want automatic doors when you're being raided. Uh, because if you walk up to a door, it may open and let me tell you, <laughs> an arc with tech doors, I've had it happen before you come up to your tech door to open it to go see who's raiding you. And three to four people just run past you into your base. And now you have to chase them around and kill them <laughs> in your base. So you don't want to, you don't want automatic doors when you're being raided. So you connect them to a pylon that you can turn off when you're going to be using it for PVP purposes. So let's say you're heading into a base that's purifying a prism deviation and you want to raid them. Uh, when you get uh, near their base, but not quite ren in render distance and not in uh, an, e an easy to identify a location. Uh, so they can't just tell where you're coming from. Pop a tent down. It's very important to put tents down. All right, I, I'm near a stronghold, so I can't put a tent here. But anyway, it's very important to always be putting your tent down. That way you can respawn there and go and fight when you die. Uh, you don't want to be running all the way back from a teleport tower unless there's just one right there. But at the same time, it'll cost you currency every time you travel back to that teleport tower. And also, teleport towers get camped. Your campsite will get camped as well if they see it. So make sure to tuck it away and hide it somewhere. All right, so there's an exploit we need to talk about. I do not recommend doing this exploit, but you need to know about it if you're going to be playing on these servers. All right, so when you are running around with your uh, prism deviation, right? You, if you enter a safe zone, you drop it. It says outside the safe zone or right inside of it. But either way, you can't bring it into a safe zone. You also, At the same time, you also can't teleport with it, right? So you can't just teleport to your base. You can't fast travel to your base. You can't go to a teleporter and jump between teleporters that aren't in safe zones to try and avoid players that way, right? You drop it when you do this. Okay, so... Everything you do to basically fast travel, move their areas, you drop it. If you're not, you know, if you die, you drop it. But if you put it in a securement unit in your base and you start the process, you can then travel to another world. All right. So if you're in world one, you can travel to world two and you can move your base into world two. All right. This allows you, all right. So, you, and it brings the deviation with the base instead of dropping it. Hopefully they patch this soon. This is an exploit. There's no way this is not an exploit because this is not intended because everything else drops it. The devs just over, you know, this is just an oversight on the devs part, uh, which should be patched pretty soon. There's a lot of things that should be patched pretty soon if the devs know about it. Um, I, I believe this would be a form of cheating. You may not. Uh, it may, if you see someone doing this, report them. If they, and then if they get banned, then you know it was cheating. Um, so I won't recommend doing this for one, it ruins fair play Two, it may be bannable, but you just, you know, that this does happen. Uh, we have Chinese players on this server that are doing this every time they get it. Every 10 minutes, they move their base to a new world. Uh, this way they can keep less people attacking them and they can, they're more likely to be guaranteed to secure the uh, deviation. So hopefully this is patched before the next phase begins and before we start getting those 300 point deviations. All right, so one of the things you're going to want to do if you're bringing your base over into uh, combat or you're going to be joining a hive in, a, you're going to be using one of their bases for the combat and they let you place the, uh, they give you permission to build on it. You're going to place a, uh, you're going to want to place a securement, you isolated securement is silo, and then you're going to put a nutcracker in it, you know, the 10 soldiers. All right. And you want to put as many of these in as you can uh, into a base uh, that's going into PVP. These things are so much better than turrets. Uh, they're almost better than a player. They basically have aimbot and they do almost as much damage as a player. And uh, yeah, so they just melt it people, especially when you have like 10 of them running around protecting a base. 
and they can pretty much help a solo player hold off an army of other players. Um, turrets, on the other hand, they don't do hardly anything. They go blah, 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 and you take a little bit of damage. Um, mostly they have a hard time tracking you, hard time shooting you. And if you get up, like, right up against a ledge or something that they're setting on, they can't shoot you. Uh, you can also take them out with explosives pretty easily. So, they're not amazing. Nutcrackers are invincible. Uh, as long as you don't destroy their securement unit. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, turrets are mostly going to help you track where players are at. Uh, they'll turn and aim at players sometimes. And they'll kind of give you an idea of which uh, edge of your base the player is at when you see them moving around. And we'll talk about why I put so many turrets on top of my base later. And why we have uh, a turret on each corner of my base on the ground. Oh, well, I haven't finished building it yet. But, yeah. We're working on it. This base is almost finished. I gotta replace my doors and get a few more turrets down and then we'll be good to go. We need to show you how to get on top of this hill. So I had to go up here the other night to help defend with this. So bases would probably help, but that's not the point. All right, let's find a pathway up. Where I think I went up over here. Yeah, I went up over here because there's less ledges sticking out. So make sure you're not going to be headbutting into a ledge like that and then start making your way up. So you see, I shouldn't be able to get up this, but if I just keep hitting jump while holding forward, I can pretty much go up the side of a hill. All right, it'll start moving me. You may hit some spots where you slide all the way back down. It will happen. Um, try to just try and kind of see where they're not too angled, where there's ledges that you can stand on and you'll be able to make your way up. It's a little bit tricky. And if somebody's standing up top, of course, they can just hammer down on you. Uh, so it makes this really hard to pull off successfully if you are an attacker. But this is how you would get up on these hills as well to place your base on top of them. As you can see, we're just uh, just mountain goading it up, right? We're just doing some mountain goat anti-gravity stuff here. <laughs> I don't know if y'all know about mountain goats, but they kind of stand on like almost... No it looks like there's nothing there. They can get their little hoof in a crack and just hang on to the side of a wall. <laughs> All right, so we're having a hard time on this spot. We might not have chose our path as good, so we'll move this way and see if we can find another better spot up. And I'm just, you know, I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm just smashing my jump button uh, <laughs> repeatedly as fast as I can to make sure I don't miss a jump. And we're just going to make our way up. And Okay, there we go. Just look to the left and right as we go. Oh, crap, I hit an edge here. Okay, cool, I can make it up it. And we found it. Yeah, see, you gotta be careful about finding those ledges like that. And don't stop moving on your way up. <laughs> Alright, ah, oh, I stopped hitting the jump button, so I started sliding back down. Because right, you can't actually walk on this surface. Uh, but it, you can it, you get just, uh, your foot just gets just the right place for just a second, so it lets you jump. There will be some spots you'll hit, and it'll force you down no matter what you do. Or if you don't hit jump in time, you'll start sliding and you'll be stuck on the slide and you won't be able to... So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, as you can see, this is a great way of just delaying somebody getting up to your base. So, if you have it placed ahead of time. Uh, but you also have to keep in mind, you're going to have to be able to get up to your base with the prism as well. With, uh, and you're on everybody's radar. They know where you are. So, if they catch, if they come up behind you and catch you doing this, they'll just shoot you from the ground, right? They'll just shoot you down. <laughs> Uh, so you need to make sure you have a good, quick way of getting up there. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Have an awesome day.